Okay, for you guys that didn't fall asleep through my last video, uh, you know that I was going to put the new spindles on, fabricate the Ackerman, make the Ackerman for the steering, and I welded the new brackets for the fenders, same on the other side. So the steering's all set up, and I'm going to put the wheels on, I'm going to put the fenders on, and yeah. Okay, as you guys can see, steering's all done. Fenders are on, spindles are on with the springs. Uh, tires are on, so the front end is all done. Uh, fingers are um, bleeding. That's all right. Uh, you know, I know I promised you guys uh, the test run, the speed run on um, in this video. But what happened was my valve springs finally came in. The 18 pound valve springs. So before I do the run, because I want to uh, mess with the governor a bit, I want to change the valve springs. But, these things, I don't know, they don't look to me like 18 pounds. Uh, they look a little thin. Uh, the only way I'm going to tell, I, like I said, I've never changed any of this or anything. So, the only way I'm going to tell is when I get the other ones off. So, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do it. It'll be my first time, so bear with me. But yeah, we're going to do that first. And then go over the whole cart. I'm going to go over the whole cart. And then we'll do a test run. Okay, I went ahead and I removed um, the spoiler. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to have to remove these four bolts. As you guys know already. Probably. Okay, I'm going to try to save this up. Uh, this gasket and it's perfect sorry about the band-aid but I was getting blood all over the place I actually heard that whiskey is good to pour on uh, sores like that but if I do that then it would be one less drink for me so that's not gonna happen okay I removed the spark plug I'm gonna bring the piston up to top dead center Okay, that's top dead center right there. So, in uh, auto mechanics, what we used to do when we wanted to do this, to remove the, the springs, lifter springs, we'd use uh, air, compressed air. But I don't have um, a fitting to screw into here and to plug a hose in or whatever to keep the air always in there. So I'm going to use what I guess everybody uses is a piece of rope or a string and shove it in here to keep the, uh, the valves from not uh, sliding down. What I'm also going to do, I hear a lot of people on YouTube and when, we, when you replace the springs and when you need to put the, the rocker arms back on, they always say it's either gap it at 8, some people say gap it at 6, some people say gap it at 7. Uh, I'm actually not even going to go by anybody because who the hell knows who's right or wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a feeler gauge and I'm going to check the gap before I do anything on what these are set at right now. And then I'll put it back exactly the same. I think that's the best way to go. Okay, uh, I watched Red Bear's Garage. He did these springs once. And I think he set the exhaust at 8 and the uh, intake at 6. So, 
I'm gonna try eight and see if any of these. Okay, the exhaust is not eight. And the intake is not eight. So, let me try a seven. If I can find it. That's eight. Okay, that's not a seven. That's a seven. Uh, seven is a little tight. Okay, so we got a six for the intake. Got a six for the intake. And a six for the exhaust. They're both set at the same. And I stopped that center right there. Actually, the six fits in the intake better. And try a five. Okay, we got a five. On the exhaust, five on the exhaust, and I think a six on the intake. Bear with me here, I don't want to mess this up. To be honest with you, they're both five. They're both five. So I don't, I don't understand where uh, he got his... Uh, well, he says he got it from some kind of uh, book or... Uh, actually, the intake... Okay, here we go. The exhaust is a six. And the intake is a five. Okay, so exhaust is six, intake is a five. Anyway, I, I'm not, I'm not criticizing, and I'm not saying that uh, anyone is wrong or anything. I just want to check these because I want to put it exactly back the same as it was. So exhaust is six, intake of five. Cool. Cool. I'm just going to shove some uh, string down here, rope, twine, whatever you want, guys want to call it. I got to get something to uh, help me shove it right, right in. Okay, I have enough rope in here. That's as much as I can get in there. Uh, I hope that's enough. If not... If one of the valves fall in, I'm going to go have to get one of those um, AWM's uh, swimming pool, swimming pool uh, cleaners. Those little creatures or whatever to come and get my valve back out. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this clip. Okay, sorry for not showing you. This stupid thing just popped right out. I did sharpen the... Um, the screwdriver a bit more but yeah you can just put it inside like these grooves here and just pop it out and I'm gonna end up losing it and if I do I'll never find it okay the pin will come out and I just dropped something oh that's the purse rod Now, supposedly, uh, yeah, I heard right, there's this little cap that comes off, and then 
you guys, I don't know if you can see it, but you push down on the valve and you just push to the side and mine doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. Okay, let me just compare this spring to the ones I have. So here's the new one that I got. Yeah, there is a big difference. So they didn't rip me off after all. There is quite a difference. This one here is about, I'd say close to a half an inch taller. And it is a little, little thicker. Let me see if I can put this in. I don't know if I'm strong enough for that. Here we go. Oh, that worked out perfect. That worked out perfect. It's not that hard actually to do this. I actually wanted, I wanted to change the springs because to a heavy one, because if I run the engine with the governor tweaked I want to make sure that um, that I don't blow the engine right okay let me get this out I want to make sure that the push rod is uh, is centered down at the bottom I gotta find some woman to work with me they have thin fingers skinny fingers I gotta find one that doesn't drink too much though because then I gotta waste my booze on her. Okay. For some reason we got a lot of gap there. And I mean a lot of gap. I to be honest, I don't understand why I would have all that gap when I didn't do any adjustment to this. That's a lot of gap. I don't know, I'm just confused. There shouldn't be that much gap. Okay, guys, I realized why there was that much gap. I forgot to put the little uh, cup back on top where it's supposed to go. That's why there's all that gap. Now, I gotta force the push rod in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift with the screwdriver and there we go. And that's all it. Now I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the gap. Okay. So what we said, or actually what I said, it was six on the exhaust and five on the intake. So let me see if this is right now. Yeah, I got that right. It's six. So I don't have to do any adjustments here. Like, uh, I'm not 100% sure if you change the springs, you have to set it to a different um, thing. I really doubt it. The movement is the same, so just the piston works a little bit harder. Anyway, I'm going to put all this back together. I'm going to change this one. You guys already saw me changing this one. I'm going to put all this back together. I'm going to end this video over here. Uh, I know I promised you guys the test run of the speeds with the converter and with the converter disengaged and everything but I do promise you on my next video that's what I'm going to do all right let me just finish this off put this back together um, I'm going to see what I can do with my rotor and hopefully uh, tomorrow or the next day depending tomorrow is supposed to rain again here so either tomorrow or the next day I will have that speed test for you so Atzar, 
David Johnson, uh, T-Man, cheers guys.